Moviegoers getting excited for the Top Gun Maverick release this week. Seems like we've been talking about this thing for years. We're joined now by former Top Gun instructor, Commander Guy Snodgrass, to talk about his experience with the real life program. Guy, good morning. Hey, good morning, Raul. How are you? Uh, super cool. Everybody's excited. This movie's finally coming out. It seems like we've been talking about it since, like, I think 2019. I don't know how long. Uh, how excited are you to finally have this thing out there? Yeah, you're right. It seems like it's been forever and a day that we've been talking about the movie. I'm extremely ecstatic. I still remember being a 10-year-old kid watching the original Top Gun movie. That was a big reason why I decided to pursue a career in naval aviation. And so now I've got three young children of my own. I can't wait to take them to the theater so we can relive that experience. Your new book, Top Gun's Top 10, I'm trying to get into your head of like, what makes you want to write something like this and what's it about? Yeah, so, you know, when I look back on my uh, military career, I had a chance to work in the last administration. I worked in the Pentagon. I worked at the White House. I learned a lot of great lessons along the way, but almost every single fundamental lesson I learned throughout my career was from Top Gun. Mm. And so what I wanted to do was work with some friends, put together the top 10 best lessons I had learned either in the cockpit or just being an instructor and then put it into something that was very easy for people to to relate to. And so that's what I've done is put those lessons into a book and uh, now it's out there. Pick pick one of those for me because a lot of people might think, well, what the heck do I have in common with like a super cool fighter jet pilot top gun guy? Um, but, but there's a lot of things that we all have in common. Can you pick one and maybe give me like a little snippet of what that advice would be? Sure. So the very first one uh, in the book is focusing on your talent, your passion, and your personality. Those are actually the three things that the members of Top Gun look for in either the students that we select or the instructors that we choose to follow in our footsteps. So you've got to have some above average talent. So you always want to work at being the best at your job that you can possibly be. You need to have passion, of course, because that's what's going to carry you through day after day. Yeah. And then the last one people found to be pretty surprising is personality, right? So especially as a top gun instructor, but in any type of, of job or career, you want to work on your personality because you want to be approachable. You want people to say, yeah. if I've got a question, I know who I'm going to go to. I had a question about that kind of led me right into it because, you know, you see the movie, you meet some of the guys. There's a, there is a certain personality uh, that goes with being a Top Gun pilot, you know, a little reputation, like a, I don't want to use the <laughs> word cocky, but I'm going to say uh, cocky. I, I, is that true? Because yeah. based on what you're seeing in the film, it's like, you know, I mean, Maverick and all these guys, when they walk into the bar, I mean, they walk in there with some kind of attitude, like, look at me, I'm cool. Yeah, and it's funny because that's one thing we actually actively fought against, right? So it's one thing to be cocky, which means usually a little bit of arrogance that goes right. along with it. On the other hand, it's incredibly important to be confident in your skill yes. set. You do yes. that through training day after day to be the very best at your craft. And so once again, that gets back to your personality. You can be recognized as one of the best fighter pilots in America, but are you humble? Do you have humility? Do you put others before yourself? Uh, that becomes a huge part of it. So that's where a little bit, I think, of real life starts to diverge sure. from the Hollywood portrayal. And then when you realize that the, the, the ultimate mission of what you're doing really is to help others and to help the world overall and, and all that kind of stuff, what does it mean to you uh, when, when people say you're a hero? Um, what does that mean to you? Because usually when you call people a hero, the first thing they'll say is, I'm not a hero, I'm just doing my job. What's your take? Yeah, well, look, I, I think anytime you take a subset of the military and you say the men and women who are serving there are, are, are viewed as heroes, I think that's a great reflection of America. Uh, it's easy to forget that all the men and women who serve are drawn. They're representative of our American values. They represent every single state and some U.S. territories. So to me, that's what makes me really incredibly proud is when, when other Americans or people around the world can say, wow, what you are doing, what the men and women you serve alongside are doing, uh, it just goes above and beyond our expectations. Well done. And I think that's a great calling card, not only for the U.S. Navy, yep. but for all the men and women who serve in America's armed forces. Yes, indeed. And, you know, you mentioned that that 1986 film motivated you to, to become a pilot. Um, I don't know if you've seen previews already uh, of the new one. Have you? Yeah, I've seen some I've seen some clips. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. What do you think that's going to do for folks now? And uh, uh, in terms of you were a former fighter pilot, you were a Top Gun instructor. I mean, essentially, this movie is about your life, your career. You've done all this stuff, right? Are you gonna, like nitpick? Hey, that's not how you do the throttle and the thing. No, I don't think there's any nitpicking on my end. You know, I look back, like I said, I mean, so many millions of people were inspired by the first movie. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing statistics like the U.S. Navy saw 
the uh, recruitment's going up by hundreds of thousands because of the first movie. And I really do hope that that has a similar effect here. I mean, naval aviation, flying fighter jets, flying any type of aircraft is an exciting career. It made all the difference in my life and the life of my family. And so if this movie, this new one, Top Gun Maverick, inspires others to follow that kind of career path, then I think it's well worth the price of admission. That's awesome. You can be honest with me. Uh, Blue Angels flight that I did five, six years ago, I pulled 7.6 Gs. Put into perspective for me, guy. How cool was that? Is that good? Is that bad? Is that average for like just a TV guy? No, that's absolutely outstanding. Uh, regardless of whether you're a fighter pilot or a TV All guy, right. it doesn't matter. And think about that, right? Your arm, if your arm weighs like eight pounds and then suddenly you're pulling seven Gs, that's 50 pounds Dude. of uh, weight that you're having to fight against. So you get a lot of respect from me from pulling seven yeah, and a half buddy. Gs. What a, what, a, what an experience that was. I can't imagine that was like your life and uh, doing that every single day. Uh, when can we get a copy of your book? When, where, tell us everything. Yeah, it's out now, so you can actually grab it from Amazon, from your local bookstore, bookstores, Barnes yes, & Noble, et cetera. Commander Guy Snodgrass, uh, I don't know if you're a basketball fan. Who you got, the Warriors or, the, or your Mavericks over there? You like the Mavericks in Dallas? Uh, we got the Mavericks over here. <laughs> it's going to have to be in seven at this point, I think. I was going to say, yeah, it's been an up-and-down series for sure. All right, my man. Uh, thanks for talking with us. We appreciate it. Keep up the good work.